Hello and welcome to Static Feedback. Uh, this is a fortnightly show, roughly, where, where I talk to um, a group of people um, who are interested in the, the static web community. Today I'm really excited to be talking to um, Nuno Curacao, who's a, a theme author for a Hugo theme, which is called Blowfish. And um, it, it's quite an exciting theme. I'm going to share a very um, quick sample of it um, on stream just before we, I introduce Nuno. Um, this is what Blowfish looks like. It's it's super clean, a powerful lightweight theme uh, for Hugo built with Tailwind CSS. Um, I've included a link to it in the in the bottom of the show notes um, in the video description here. So feel free to check it out um, in your own time. It's it's very well documented, and that's something I'm I'm keen to talk to Nuno about. Nuno, welcome, and thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for the invitation, David. Really excited to be here. Great. Um, now I I wonder if um, if you wouldn't mind sharing a bit of information about your your background in, in software, um, I understand this is your first theme, and it, it is very successful already, which which must be quite a shock, but a, a welcome one, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so regarding my background, like uh, currently I'm a staff product manager at Docker, so I'm focusing on building tools for developers. Um, my background is actually in computer science, even though I'm currently a product manager, I I studied that, I did like a master's degree in distributed systems. Um, then I worked for a couple of years as a solutions architect, so more focused on designing technical solutions. Um, and I did that and eventually stumbled upon product management. Um, I think I like to be closer to users, understand them and actually build something for them and to solve real, real problems. Um, and then after a couple of years, I, I, I was doing this for like large corporations and whatnot, and I wanted to try it more, what it felt like to be closer to the ground. Um, so I uh -huh. switched to, to, to a startup. Um, and yeah, basically I've been doing that since then and now doing the same thing at Docker, which is quite exciting. Yeah. Um, on, the side, on the side, I always had like, you know, pet projects or projects with friends to try to dabble on new technologies like Node.js, React.js, React Native and whatnot. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically my, let's say, amateur software development that's experience. That's fantastic. So what was that transition like um, coming to getting closer to the ground or leaving larger companies? It, it was quite exciting. I think like the fact that like on one hand, you're closer to users, right? So mm. like you 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 know better what they want and you like the feedback loop between what you build and how people feel about it is quite smaller than in large corporations mm -hmm. um and also like personally it has the advantage of you being able to do more stuff and influence more stuff like the fact that the company is only like 150 people or not versus like 5,000. <laughs> um you have a way bigger impact on you know what's built how it's how is it built? How is it market sold and whatnot? So yeah, that's quite interesting. And I think like one part of it's like specifically at Docker, like that was one of the things that it's super interesting, like, because like it was the first one that actually, you know, like our roadmap is public on GitHub, right? And and it's amazing to see the the community around it and the response and like how they want us to do better, how they have suggestions, ideas, and they want to contribute also. So that's quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, I think it's fascinating coming from a, a larger a background where, where everything is secret and maybe told to a very few people um, to open source where everything is open and people will let you know if they don't like it, but they'll, they'll also let you know what they're excited about on your roadmap. Yep, yep. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a really cool thing that surprised me doing Blowfish, right? Mm. Just the response of the community and like the fact that people want to help and whatnot, that's, that's quite interesting. Yeah, and so you, someone, I think you mentioned someone had had said had, had jumped in and said, "Hey, here's a Russian translation. Just here it is. I translated everything." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that happened a couple of times. Like I think the fact that the original team that I for, uh, forked Congo had like mm. support for internationalization, um, like people just jump in and like they want to use it on their language. It's not available, so they just build it for themselves and then they make it public. Yeah, uh, so that use, others can use it. Like that, that's quite cool. Yeah, I think it's just, I, I mean, I've said this before on other, on other streams, but it's, it's just one of the beautiful things about open source that you see the value in it, you see it for yourself, but you also see it for other people. And, and there's so much giving and so much um, just free, free labor, but um, people put thought into how other people are going to use it. And as a, as a PM, I think it, it must be quite, a, quite important to have that user focus. 
Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, and and that's that's another appeal, I think, of um, of Blowfish and, and also Congo. To be fair, I mean, the, the documentation it's really documentation first. Everything is stepped out and laid out in both of these things. Um, how to install it? What are the features? And it's it's it makes what could be quite a scary approach to adding a new theme to Hugo, which which can at times feel quite technical. Um, it, it makes it quite friendly. And I think you and um, original Congo author has, have done very well there. Yeah, I, th I think that was original one of the reasons that pulled me onto Congo. So, <clears throat> like it all began when I wanted to create my own um, website. I wanted to have my own blog, start writing. Um, I decided to build my own blog just because I didn't want to use like any other, you know, like those sites that like you need to pay every month or something. So, yeah. Um, and also wanted to control the hosting, wanted to control how people access to it. Like didn't want anyone to pay to be able to read whatever mm. I write, right? Um, and then I, like I started to dabble about like which tools were available. Like I think I, on a perfect, let's say, sweet spot between the features that it makes available mm. to users and the simplicity if you just want to do something basic. Um, mm. I think then Congo was like one of the few teams that had really good UI and UX, like the fact that they already integrated Tailwind was like super cool. Yes. And the documentation for it was like amazing in comparison to some to some others that I that I tried, right? So it's like super easy to get something simple running. Yes. And then what I really liked about Tugu is that 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 initial step is super easy, and then you can deep dive, learn more about it, and actually like extend the team, like build new things upon it, create your own team and whatnot. So that was yeah. quite cool. Yeah, and you've mentioned before um, that that Hugo, you appreciate that that levels of Hugo that that you can use it without knowing too much. You can get, get it, have a have a slightly more a deeper yep. dive, <clears throat> and and at every step, there's you know there's a layer that you can you can appreciate as as much yeah, as you want yeah, to dive think, into it. Yeah, I think like the, the way the framework is structured is like uh, really good because it can offer something to like a very, let's say junior user or someone which is not mm -hmm. a developer, but still wants to try to build their own site versus like a, you know, like a, a senior software developer that really knows how to work with Go, Go templating and can build their own HTML and CSS. Mm -hmm. um, even start importing tools like Tailwind, which is not obvious how that works in, in Ugo. That's right. So, the, the level of flexibility is it's quite amazing i would say yeah yeah and 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 also i mean tailwind is and alpine and tailwind um both difficult to to get going with hugo but but when you get them going you're flying i mean it it really makes a difference um so it, yeah it, it's it's mm -hmm. beautiful to see um now i i wonder if you if you wanted to talk a bit more about the process of of making um Blowfish and 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 what made you choose to fork rather than to make your own theme from scratch? Sure, uh, we can talk a little bit about that. So, like yeah. originally, I wanted to just build my own website, so I tried a bunch of tools. I ended up choosing Google, mm -hmm. um, and then ended up choosing Congo as a team because of the reasons we just spoke about. Uh, but eventually, like there was just things that I wanted to add um, to the way that the site looked, like better responsiveness like i wanted the menu to look a little bit different like that mm. that's how it all started right so um and th and that's the point where i started deep diving onto when how to do like overrides to the overlays that the team makes available and build my own stuff and whatnot so i just started doing that um and eventually at some point i said okay maybe i can just like open some prs for the congo guys and just help them evolve the team in the way i wanted to but um, because Kong was such a big project, like those took time, you know, and like, uh, I think like they took like a couple of weeks to just close like one of the PRs I wanted and I had it running on my, uh, my machine already with the overrides and whatnot. So, um, then I started to, okay, like what, up, what if I try to just make my own team and try to have that experience we do, that was a complete failure <laughs> just because like, um, I think that's the part where we sometimes a lacking a little bit like it relies too much on the teams to understand how who actually works right. um so trying to create a, a team from scratch was yeah it was a, li a little bit failure so um so then i just thought about like what what if i just fork congo and start like changing into the way i want um and that's how it started right um like eventually i just 
thought to myself, like, even though I, like, it felt a little bit like stealing something from someone or whatnot, like, I thought that, hell, we could just make it public and uh, maybe someone will try to either fork it, do something they, they want, they like it, they can contribute, whatever. So that's, mm. that's basically how it started. It was like more like an experiment than anything super thought through, I would say. Right. Um, and, and the process of actually um, getting the project running. So you use Docker, Hugo and Firebase, right, to, to get mm -hmm. started with this. And, and was yeah. this was this partly to, to see things from the user's perspective with Docker and get a, get a better understanding? of your own product yeah yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah. like the um, it, it's super interesting because i like from my personal point of view this was all like a bunch of just experiments to get myself to learn some of these technologies so um like firebase i had used in the past and super comfortable mm -hmm. with it like to use in terms of hosting yep. or even to use in terms of like dynamic data or whatever um regarding docker that's uh so the, the first experiments i did with my home page was i wanted to test the functionality we have which is called dev environment mm -hmm. so the difference here is like you're not just running a container that gives you a piece of software like a database or like a front-end back-end whatever mm -hmm. it actually containerizes your dev environment so um let's say building ugu uh, or building something on you using a team or whatnot wouldn't require you to install anything on your machine just like pull yeah. a container get that starting and then just SSH into the container and like you're done you you just you can just start developing stuff yeah so dog fooding that part was part of the experiment <laughs> yet, um for the initial team yeah and what did you learn from that that experiment or that part of the experiment um I mean it, it was like amazing to see so like I think when I started to develop like even back in university or if not like everything was much harder you know to like deploy software install stuff on your machine like documentation even though there's still room for improvement nowadays like it was even worse back then right like you had to mm. really be a an aficionado of like technology to understand everything that was going on um and so the fact that you can just like so like i did an article and explaining how to use that initial setup i built like the fact that someone can just like write one cli you know a terminal command and yeah. get like a fully fledged dev environment working that they can then just do whatever they want with without worrying about installing google go whatever um that was pretty amazing and then obviously the part about exploring google and installing a team get like configuring everything i wanted that was also hmm. a learning experience yeah that's fantastic and and that's so portable as well isn't it that that having that experience you're not tied to a single computer that you can you can move your container elsewhere, take it with you. And uh, yep. that's fantastic. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, we, we talked a little bit um, off stream about the, the process of, of making Blowfish and how it might differ to um, a, a professional developer, say, someone who is, is coding eight hours a day, um, working on software eight hours a day, from behind the scenes perspective, the, the, the code side of things. Um, how do you think your approach differs to, to that kind of developer, someone who who you you would call a capital D developer? That's a really good question. Um, no, I think the point is like I, I'm not a professional developer, right? So um, I think it's good to acknowledge that there's there are people out there that would develop that way better than I probably ever could, right? And I think like even going back to your question about community and open source, that's quite fun to watch now. Like. Mm. Um, there's people coming in and say, oh, maybe we can do this a little bit better, or this would be more performant or whatever. And that's super helpful, right? Because it's the part that probably I'm lacking a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I think like the unfair advantage is that mainly because I come from like a product background and that's what I'm currently doing. I tend to think more about it in terms of like a user or how a user would see what I'm doing. Um, so like things, for example, like um, documentation, which was already amazing on Congo, like, yeah, I want to keep that going, right? I want like someone that tries this for the first time, or if this is their first team, that this is easy to configure, that they don't need to go into like Google documentation or Google forums or whatever to try to understand what's going on. Um, and then like smaller things in evolving the team, right? For example, breaking changes, like that's not something if possible that I want to introduce because it means that someone can just update the code and it broke the site. <laughs> like that's yeah. a really crappy experience, right? So I think thinking more about how a user uses it is maybe the, the main difference versus being super focused on just building 
amazing codes, yeah, which I, I cannot even do. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I think you're unfair to yourself. Um, I, th I think it, it's it's interesting that you framed it as an unfair advantage. I mean, it it, it is it's something that you bring to the table, and it's I mean, yes, yes, it's, no, it's just it's just because I think like um, overall that if you haven't gone through the experience of actually having to talk to users that use something that you built and like hear them complain that like they don't understand what you're doing. Yep. Um, you don't understand what are the steps needed for that to be clear, right? Like it can be documentation, it can be like, you know, user onboarding, it can be, there are several solutions for that problem, right? But yeah, it just becomes clear if you have any kind of experience, experience with customers um, that that's important, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, like I was watching like some some forums yesterday, even for like another team. I don't remember which one it was, but there was some users complaining that they couldn't get it going, right? Because team was amazing. They really wanted to get it going, but documentation was not there, right? So just yeah. super hard to find out which front matter variables were available, which configuration files should they use and whatnot. So yeah. Well, I think I think this is that this is where um Blowfish and, and Congo stand out that, that <clears throat> the and and you fr you framed it in a way that I hadn't really thought about that that you're pulling the documentation away from so it's not relying we're not relying on Hugo to the Hugo docs to tell users how to use your theme which a lot of themes do you a lot of theme authors would assume that you have that everyone has a grounding in Hugo and that's that's not the case I mean we we know that from um, bringing in new users to Hugo they like the sound of it maybe they they know it has fast builds um, maybe they they like Go um, but they don't. If they're using a theme, they don't necessarily need to know everything about Hugo. They just need to know how their theme works. So yeah, yeah, it's true. I think it's... I, I'm not sure if it was I'm not sure if it was intentional or not, but I think like Ugu works more as like the let's say the base for then teams to be built upon on. Hmm. Um, but if you're coming straight from like not ever knowing about these technologies or Jamstack or whatever, like you probably get into through the team, right? Yeah. So, if then you don't have documentation on how to do something else, then probably not going to to right. So the, the way I see it is more like the team should help users get going, and then probably like Ugo documentation is actually more for people building themes or people that want to understand how to override what the team is doing or whatnot. So exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. And and I, and that's kind of borne out by our experience at Cloudkin and seeing people come to Gemstack and static sites for the first time. The, the first thing people want to do is they want to have a theme that works. Um, they want to have they want to put their own words in where the where the theme words are, put their own logo in, and just get a feel for yep. um, my site running on your theme. <laughs> but you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, no, that, that that's really cool. And 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 we all, we all know the importance of good documentation. Um, but I think yes, Blowfish and Congo um, are superstars among among the documentation themes. Um, theme, Thank sorry, the, the documentation for themes. Um, we I mentioned right <laughs> at the, the start um, on that response to, to Blowfish and how it's been. So what does it make you feel to know that um, you've got 100 plus people, you've got people, um, 100 plus people starring it, you've got people offering solutions, you've got um, people opening issues and, and, and starting to suggest fixes. What's your overall feeling about this experiment of yours? That's quite an interesting question. Um, I think I'm happy about it to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. It's quite cool to see the response of the community in the sense of like, I don't feel like it's it's like mine or something anymore. It's just because it's open and everyone can contribute. Sure, I'm the one like approving PRs or whatnot, right? But hmm. the community really has a say on what they want out of the team and how it should be built or in which direction should it go. Yeah. Um, so that has been quite cool to see. And I think like, if anything, it makes me feel a little bit more responsible to make sure that we go in the right direction. Um, so yeah, I think it's uh, a mix of those two things, right? And really happy yeah. about the response. Like, really grateful for all the people that open PRs and help evolve teams and whatnot. So yeah, that's really cool. It's a really interesting tension that that feeling of being responsible, but also feeling that it belongs to other people. So suddenly you're responsible for that the the collective ownership um, and collective use of a theme. And so you're kind of being pulled in two different directions there. Yeah, but I think like at least from the 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 experiences I had, and this is my first project, so probably I'm like not 
doing everything perfectly, but people are super open even to, you know, like even if you give a suggestion, like I don't think it's a good idea or something like it's, it, it hasn't become a problem yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I would say that at, right now, whoever is participating in like PRs issues, like the discussions and whatnot, like the discussion has been super healthy in where to evolve the team and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. so that's cool. Fantastic. And, and so what's on your roadmap? For Bluefish, what what are you hoping to do, or um, what what's the the next few months look like? I don't have anything planned right now, so I think I at this stage I did pretty much all the you know UI UX improvements I wanted to do for the for the team and for what I want to actually use on my homepage. Mm -hmm. um, I think like the next few months I probably will be looking more into the community to suggest new ideas and things that are missing uh and things like that if anything like one of the things i want to focus a little bit more is like um performance and mm -hmm. just make sure that because we added like a bunch of features on top of what was already there right so probably need to work a little bit on making sure that everything is polished and performant and nothing is dragging the experience of the team yep. that's like one side of it i think the other side is again because we added a bunch of features and if you go into the home page i think we were talking about this the other day like um there's different combinations of how the theme can look. Like usually Hugo teams are more like, this is what you get. And you can just like put articles in place and whatnot. Yeah. I think Blowfish is, has a high level of configurability, right? Mm, uh, and that comes with a, with a high set, with a different set of problems, right? Like just making sure that users understand all the variations they can build. Um, yeah. So I'm, I've been working on like a showcase section on the site just to display like several samples of what a full fledged site could look like mm -hmm. um so i want to expand that a little bit just to it becomes clear to users what they can get out of it and then they can dive into documentation to understand how to do it fantastic um and how can people help what what can if someone's interested in and in maybe making their first contribution to something on github how can they help with um with blowfish are you, are you looking for more translations um can they open prs uh, i mean yes definitely <laughs> yeah i'm not looking at anything specific right now i think like um whoever you like in whichever way you want to help or you can help like either prs to optimizations in code mm -hmm. um just ideas that some ideas have been popping up in discussion that are quite interesting uh just opening the issue with like if you find a bug i think all of that is super productive um having said this if you are super interested in making sure that html code and whatnot is highly performant like that would be super helpful because you know that's already that probably I would need to do some research before being able to contribute massively. So I think yeah. that's it. Fantastic. Um, so pe people can find um, Blowfish um, in the link at the bottom of this video. Um, you can also follow um, Nuno on Twitter and find his LinkedIn profile um, and his website um, at, again at the bottom of this video. Um, I just wanted to say thanks one more time to Nuno and congratulations on the success of Blowfish. Um, I'm looking forward to following it. I'm already following it. I'm looking forward to seeing seeing how it develops and um, just watching it grow. And, and I think being a good model for documentation of, of themes for Hugo, for other static sites, um, it's wonderful to see. So thank you very much, Nuno. Thanks, everything, for the invitation. It was great.